welcome to a special bonus edition of the Ben and Wally show. It's the Emma and Wally show. What's up, Emma? <laughs> hey, Dad. So let me tell you something. It is so nice to have someone on the other end that is just sweet. Look, between you and me, no one else. Ben's mean. Now that Ben is essentially my height, anytime he's in shoes and I'm barefoot, he'll walk up to me and say, hey, little man, and put his you know, arm on my shoulder. Or he calls me fat old man, or he grabs my love handles. Bottom line, no respect, not nice. So it is so great to have a, a beautiful young lady and sweet and kind on the other end. But I will say, in spite of all those nice things I'm saying, I believe you have some grievance of sorts that you'd like to air out with me. So uh, what do you have? Um, so I'd like to start off the show with a segment that I like to call why Emma thinks she's been demoted to second favorite child. We'll find um, out. You can guess why, because the title of the show is um, the Ben and Wally show, not the Emma and Wally show. I, was, I came to dad saying, hey, I'd like to be on the show since Ben quit. But anyways, I think I got to be second favorite child after a string of events, first starting all the way back in like fifth grade when I started club volley. <laughs> when I started club volleyball, I was all in. That was like dad nice thing. We travel together, do lessons, go to training. So we were buds. Like we were doing everything together for a long time. And then I was like, okay, I want to play in college. And dad's like, yeah, let's he was all on yes, board. I know. Yes. He's like, okay, maybe we'll get some money, like college sports. Like I was this little athlete. So then, you know, you were always like recording my highlight videos and editing them and helping me with like getting recruited and stuff. And then eventually, like when I was 16, we started going on college visits and stuff. It's crazy. So that was awesome. But then, so we, you know, we were at like peak of our relationship then you know like yes. club volleyball yeah. mm -hmm. we were like on top of the world then yeah. like before going into my junior year of high school I just got burnt out and I was like that's it I don't want to play college I want to quit club and you're like oh my gosh it was a bit of a shock <laughs> yeah it was pretty it was pretty abrupt so I quit club volleyball abruptly and then since I wasn't going to play in college, I was like, okay, we need to start looking at other schools, you know, without the intention of playing college volleyball. So you really, I mean, mom would take me on more of those visits. And for the most part, you were kind of like, okay, look wherever you didn't have super strong opinions, but you know, as a great father, you raised me to be a university of Kentucky wildcat fan. As you should be. Right. And so there are only a few schools that you trained me to hate from a young mm -hmm. age. And that yeah. was Duke, number one, yes, non-negotiable, sure. Louisville, one. of course, because mm -hmm. yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. And then Kansas was the third one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so as you can see where this is leading, maybe if you heard from previous episodes, I go to KU. So <laughs> I remember you weren't thrilled when I went on that visit. No. And then you were even less thrilled when I came home and I was like, I love it. I want to go to KU. You're like, no. And mom had to rub it in your face. Yep. And you're paying for it too. After, you know, quitting club volleyball, disappointment to my family, not playing in college either. And then being a traitor, I think that um, that has earned me second favorite child. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think second favorite is pretty extreme. It, let's just say if you are second favorite, it's a really close second. <laughs> so you should feel so good about that. There's I mean, only there's, two of us, right? It's, so. it's, it's right there. <laughs> you're right there. Okay. Um, you're leaving out though, like one big element that was introduced into, well, so for, let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. So you decided that you weren't going to play college volleyball. No problem. Right. But what you really should have said was you decided that, we weren't playing college volleyball because <laughs> I sort of felt like I was playing volleyball in college. Right. You know, this was sort of like all I did was nonstop travel with you for volleyball. And then mm -hmm. it was like, go, just done. Yeah. I was like, wait, I really enjoyed, like when you weren't playing, I had all these buds that we would go hang out <laughs> together. It was just like a great time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that was sort of a shock, but honestly it was great. And I'll give us, I don't like being serious, but I'll be, I'll be serious. 
I was at some point going to have to spend more time with Ben, but he was far enough behind you that he wasn't really doing anything super serious. So at some point I was going to have to shift. I mean, when I was going with you all the time, that meant I wasn't at any of his games. Right. So I'm in, in some ways making up for lost time there. Um, but the thing that you're, so KU, KU is a problem. Like I, so I don't like KU, A, because I'm a Kentucky fan, and B, because I live in Missouri, and so then I was also a Missouri fan. So there's like double reasons to not like KU. Uh, but I, I've dealt with it, and you've seen I'll wear a KU t-shirt from time mm-hmm. to time, although it, I just try to look at it in the mirror so it says UK right. on it. I feel better about that. But you're <laughs> leaving out like one big thing in there. Um, I don't know. You might have replaced me with another man. Right. So, so, so you go, Ooh, from you no, went there, no dates, nothing like we're not date to just, Oh, Oh, I've di- and just gone, gone. <laughs> so you don't need me anymore. We'll just have, you know, who take care of it all. I'm okay. just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're not the second favorite child. You know, I okay. love you guys both. Equally. Right. Right. No, but that was fun. It was interesting to hear your point of view, but um, you know, it's just not true. So how do you think Ben felt like when I was gone with you all the time? Yeah. Probably felt like he was uh, being left out in those moments. Yeah. It's impossible to uh, be everything to everyone. Right. Okay. So we're done with that whole thing. You're not the second favorite child. You guys are both right there, equal. Okay. Maybe. All right. Um, One thing that we do share in common that we got as a family that we really share is that we love ice cream. And so you would propose that we sort of rank our favorite ice cream places. So would you mind sort of just filling us in on what I'm going to be picking from? And then I'll go ahead and go first and give you my reasons and then you can go. Right. Sure. So basically we picked like five ice cream custard places in St. Louis that um, I've been to all of these that we're going to list. I think there's one that dad, you haven't been to. So, I mean, it's not totally even, but so we're going to be ranking Ted Drew's, which is like St. Louis classic, um, Fritz's, Silky's, Andy's, and then Clementine's, which isn't custard, but that's like a St. Louis ice cream place. Right. And so it's important to note that they are all St. Louis institutions. Right. So we're not doing national chains because we don't, right. we're too good for that. We don't yeah. go to those places. <laughs> all right. So I'll give you my five. Um, for me, number five. Andy's and that's because I've never been there yeah (laughs) there's like one and it's it's not that convenient it's just in an odd location and so I've just never the opportunity's never presented itself and so I don't have it so I just put it number five for me number four is Clementine's I love their gooey butter cake ice cream but I got two problems with it it's overpriced and it is way out of the way it is on my way nowhere uh, so you can't just go to Clementine's. Right, that's like you, fair. And you want to talk about overpriced. So I was going to get your Aunt Janet Clementine's ice cream and ship it to her for her 60th birthday. FYI, I have a sister that's 60 years old. I mean, I mean, how does a 30, <laughs> to call her out. How does 30 year old have a 60 year old sister? I don't right, know. Right, right. Um, <laughs> so I was going to send her Clementine's ice cream because they ship it. I was like, oh, perfect. So I was, I, I put in the cart four things because you have to buy four mm-hmm. of the gooey butter cake ice cream. I'm like, this is going to be perfect. I go to check out. You have to ship it FedEx next day. It was going to be $90 to <laughs> ship. And so I said, hey, uh, uh, Janet, guess what? You're not getting ice cream. Jeez. <laughs> I was at 90 bucks on that thing. No. Okay, so there, there's that. For me, then, three would be Ted Drew's. And that might be sacrilege to some people. I think it's really good. But mm-hmm. it's similar to, for me, uh, Clementine's in that it's super far away. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a destination. You've got to, yeah. you can't go there quickly. I mean, it'll take us 30 minutes to get there. Right. Um, for me, number two, then, is Silky's. So oh. I really like Silky's. Uh, because it's fairly, it's close to our house. The custard is good. But I will tell you, lately, they've been doing a really bad job of mixing the concrete. So mm-hmm. it's like all vanilla for the first two thirds. And then the bottom third is all the toppings. Um, but I do like it because it's convenient. But for me, number one will always be Fritz's. And that's wow. probably because 
I have a special place in my heart for Fritz's because it's a place I went with my dad as a kid. And it's where I went with as a teenager with friends. Two big memories for my life came from Fritz's parking lot. So the mm -hmm. first one was I was a kid and I was, I got my stuff. My dad wasn't getting anything. I was walking across the parking lot. Ted Drew's, which we talked about earlier, has a thing that when they hand you your concrete, they turn it upside down <laughs> to show you that it's how thick it is, right? right? So I was walking across the parking lot. <laughs> hey, Dad, look. And I turn the thing upside down. What I didn't know is they put two cups. <laughs> so the cup with the ice cream just falls and just splatters everywhere. And I'm left holding this cup. So that was, a, that was it's funny now. It was just... Very, I was very distraught at the time, and I remember my yes. dad not being very happy. The second one is I had a friend who had a car that was so old that for some <laughs> reason, when you made right-hand turns, the horn would go off. And not like honk, like it would be like, ah. <laughs> so we made sure that we went around the block so that he could turn left into Fritz's. So he turned left in, and in this particular one, you had to drive past the area where all the people were lined up and there were a ton of people and we turn in nothing. It was like, great. We're driving. We are get where we're dead even with all the people and the horn just goes off. It's like, and everyone looks and we're just, he's just like, not doing anything. But it was like, that was a great moment for my teenage years. That was so hilarious. So for me, Fritz is the number one. Okay. That took a long time for Fritz. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's good. Your memories. Turn. I like it. Okay. So I have to throw out there. My honorable mention is Sheridan's. Um, rest in peace, Sheridan's. That is actually, they have locations in like Overland Park and in like Topeka. So like kind of close to where I go to school, they had a location that used to be right by our house. And that was like my high school hangout spot. Like my friends and I, we would always go to Sheridan's our family, we would always go there because it was like so close. Now there's not even a place that's nearly that close. Um, they had a wedding cake concrete with like chunks of wedding, wedding cake. cake. In the concrete. It yeah. Was it was so good. So that's still, you know, that's a touchy subject for me. I keep saying that I need to, you know, take a special trip when I'm back at school to go to a Sheridan's. But anyway, so that's my honorable mention. Okay. Number five for me is Ted Drew's. I think it is completely overrated. Like you come to St. Louis and people are like, oh, you need to have emos and like gooey butter cake, toasted wraps and Ted Drew's. Like, no, Ted Drew's, it's so far out of the way. It's not that good. Like if you've had like chocolate ice cream from Ted Drew's, like it just is not as good as some of these other custard places. But I know that is, like you said, probably sacrilegious as a St. Louisan to say that, mm -hmm. but I stand by my word. Okay, number four for me is Fritz's. Now I do, I like Fritz's, and I will say that I have good memories going there from when we were little, because we used to live in a different house and that was close to our house. Mm -hmm. I really haven't been there in a long time. Um, so and I'm not like tied to like the location or like, but I just remember going there when I was little and I liked it. Mm -hmm. um, for me, number three is Andy's. It's like a, a love-hate relationship or maybe a like hate relationship with Andy's. So I think they have like pretty good ice cream. Um, my friends always like to go here. Um, for me, it has to be the Manchester location. Um, the reason why I don't like Andy's is because at the Kirkwood location, right before I left for college, someone hit my car in the parking lot and drove off. And then I saw it the next day that someone had hit my car and it was at Andy's in Kirkwood. So good ice cream, Kirkwood, awful location, Manchester, it's the place to go. Constant argument between my friend group, which location we're going to, but they all know we like to go to Manchester. Um, number two for me then is Clementine's. Um, I love the gooey butter cake ice cream and I will pay any amount of money for it pretty much. I mean, the chunks of cake in it are so good. However, I will say one time I had it and they didn't really have cake in it and that was a total bust, but I kind of like the cute trendy vibe of it. Um, and then for me, number one is Silky's. I was super skeptical about going to Silky's after I got my heart ripped out of my chest when I heard that Sheridan's was closing. Um, my boyfriend had was like, okay, we're going to try going to Silky's. You'll like it. I'm like, it's just not going to be the same. Nothing can replace Sheridan's. 
But lo and behold, I tried the muddy sneakers concrete and my life has never been the same. So yeah, basically it's so good. Like I get it almost every time. Like a couple of weeks ago, I got something different and I was like, it's good, but it's not the muddy sneakers. Basically it's like peanut butter ice cream with hot fudge and Reese's, which is like my perfect combination. So I love silkies. That will be my favorite, I think forever, but yeah. That was kind of fun. I'm surprised that ours were so different. I thought, yeah. I was like, oh man, this isn't going to be that interesting. Ours are going to be the same, but very, yeah. very different. Yeah. I mean, for me, Silky's is good, but it's just, it's the convenience that I like. Yeah. Hey, we're going to still get it tomorrow night, right? That's right. For sure. I'm holding you to yeah. it. Okay. Yep. Muddy sneakers um. tomorrow night. <laughs> you already know my order. Yep. All right. So I wanted to talk about um, what college was going to look like next year versus what your school is planning for it to yeah. be. So you're going to be a sophomore next year at KU. Mm -hmm. They say you're going back on time, no yeah. Labor Day or fall break, mm -hmm. come home at Thanksgiving. You don't go back to February, no spring break. And for at least first semester, all of your classes are online. Now, yeah. not every program's classes are all online, but right. your school's classes are online. Uh -huh. So given all of my, that information, here are my thoughts. First of all, the school can't afford for half the student body to take a gap year in 2020, 21, Oh no. right? So they have to announce, oh yes, of course, you're all coming back. Right, right. They've got to get you onto campus and get that date in September that tuition is due. Mm -hmm. Once they get this tuition, then they'll be like, we don't really care if we have to send them all home. They can just do all do online classes. Right. We have to get them locked in because then they'll be like, well, They've already come here for the semester. They're not going to take a gap year. Right. They're just going to go ahead and finish out second semester. Yeah. Maybe they come back. Maybe there's a vaccine or whatever. But let's say hypothetically they don't send you guys home. This is my thought, my prediction. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a total nightmare. Oh, yeah. Set it yourself. No one is going to social distance. No. It is going no. to be one big Petri dish of college students with yeah. breakouts and spreading everywhere uh-huh and then i don't i don't know about football but i really find it hard to believe that they're going to let students into sporting events i know that's which so will, hard as stink. a ku student like basketball games i mean that's like easily my favorite part of going there i mean that's i mean i that's kind of unusual for a girl to say that my favorite thing is going to basketball games but i grew up loving college basketball and like allen fieldhouse is insane and that place just would not be the same without the student section or without fans. Like that's well, what makes that environment so crazy for the players and for the opponents that come to play there. Can you imagine a student section where they go, okay, we're gonna let a limited number of students, but you all have to be 10 feet apart. There'd right. be like no one in there. It would no. be the not fun experience. Yeah, it'd be so bizarre. Especially we have to like camp to be able to get the good spots at the basketball games. And so you're like, you know, prepping all week, staying at Allen Fieldhouse to be able to get into those games. Well, if you're like limiting even more how many students can go, I mean, it's just going to be so cutthroat to get into those games. Yeah. But I totally agree with what you're saying about it just being a giant Petri dish of germs. I had, um, you know, bars and parties. I mean, how do you even begin to – monitor that people have already gone back to um ku i know lots of people that have already gone back to the bars because they've opened back up um and this is super interesting today i saw a tweet um about that so barstool ku had like put on their instagram story a screenshot of a tweet from a reporter and it said that douglas county officials say the hawk a popular college bar has been identified as a source of a recent covid19 outbreak in the city so this came out today that as of last Friday, members in Lawrence, um, which is in Douglas County, has like, they've totally gone up. And it's because of the bars reopening mm -hmm. and everyone going back. So now they're trying to figure out, okay, who is there? And, you know, they're like, if you were there, you need to quarantine yourself for two weeks. Okay. If you're going to the bars, you weren't social distancing. So you're definitely not going to quarantine yourself. No. And it's going to be no different when we go back to school. No one's going to be like, you know what? I'm going to be safe and not go to the bars or I'm going to be safe. And, you know, we're not going to have any parties at our frat or, you know, any date parties with our sorority. Like that's just not going to happen. Well, you're living in your sorority house 
in a sleeping dorm. Oh, I know. You're not you're just 80 girls yeah. or whatever it is, like in one big massive room. Like they're Right. It's going to be a mess. Yeah. I got lucky. So I'm not sleeping in this sleepy dorm. And at Uh, first I was like, I'm not sure about that. And then I told my mom that I got like, there's one random bed in each of our rooms. And I just got put in that room. Um, And I was asking my mom, I was like, I don't know if that's going to be weird or not. She's like, Emma, you're avoiding all the germs of the sleeping dorm. I was like, it's a good point. Do not think about that. But I mean, I, that's not just my sorority. That's so many fraternities and sororities at KU have sleeping dorms, which that's going to be. Is that, uh, to me, it's yes. a very weird concept, but on your campus, it is not weird at all. Yeah. What... It's how they make everyone fit. All right. So is that, that's it in your thoughts on that? Yep. I think so. All right. Well, that brings us to our final segment, which is my personal favorite. One <sighs> awkward question. And as always, I will go first. I'm so Emma, nervous about this. Are you ready? No, this is like literally going to be so much worse than you asking Ben. No, I don't it's not. know why. Okay. Are you ready for your question? Yeah. Emma, who is a better snuggler, me or your boyfriend, <laughs> Patrick? That's so uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I don't even want to answer this. Of course you don't. Um, Cause I'm going to eat my words either way. I know. That's why the question is so he's going to watch this. I know he is. <laughs> um, Patrick. And hence, you are the second favorite child. Congratulations. <laughs> you were right all along. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's okay. I, if I were you, I would have answered the same way. I was actually yeah. hoping you were, would answer that way so then I could deem you the second favorite right, child. Right, right. No, okay, that worked I will out gladly accept my crown of second favorite child. Yes. Look it would you. probably be kind of weird if I had said you because then people would be like, you snuggle your dad. <laughs> like, well, you, then you that just any, adds a whole... Yes, you don't, don't more, but when you were a little kid, you were my right. snuggle buddy. I love that, yeah. I know, yeah, I don't, we don't snuggle anymore. Don't worry, that doesn't happen. We're not some <laughs> weird family like that. Okay, um, it's not like Tom Brady kissing his kids on the lips, but that's a whole nother. I didn't see that. Oh, you've never seen that? Okay. Well, aren't his kids older? Or I mean, younger? Um, not really. But there's like that's like a thing. It's like Tom's Tom Brady's kids like hide from him at midnight on New Year's Eve because he's gonna kiss them on the lips. (laughs) (laughs) He's just doing it to screw with them, probably. Yeah, I don't know. Right, okay. That's funny. I have a couple questions in case. Okay. Not... It's called one awkward question. I know, question. but if it doesn't work, then just okay. move on. We'll okay. See. Okay. My awkward question actually kind of ties into that mm-hmm. because I want to put you on the spot since you put me on the spot. Sure. All right. Answer this honestly. Mm-hmm. How long do you think Patrick and I will last? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, that's. Oh, well, that's not awkward for me. It could be really awkward for you guys. Oh, I mean, I just think it's kind of funny and I want to hear what you have to say, honestly, because I feel like if I asked you this in a different situation, you would like be like, oh, we're just not going to talk about the boy (laughs) you're seeing. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how I don't talk about that. Okay. So I look, if I was, oh. I don't know. This is really uncomfortable. Good. Hey, uh, I did a great job, Ben. This came uh, to me today and I was like, I asked Ben, I was like, should I ask this? He's like, yeah, that would be pretty awkward. So, so you've been dating for what? Two and a half years? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you both aren't troublemakers. You both study a lot. You watch a lot of movies. <laughs> don't go out a lot. Uh, so there's less <laughs> chances of people getting in trouble. Um, boy, I, how long do I, I don't know that I can guess how long I'm going to say that I, oh boy, this me I can't, I, oh, this makes me want to vomit. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes uh, I did my job. I, um, <laughs> I'll say, I don't know what to say. 51% that you don't break up. I'm just going to give it a slightly better than average. Okay. Look, there's so many things that could happen. Yeah, I mean, for sure. 
but you're I not going to put an expiration date on it. I, I can't. Oh, so you want an expiration date. I oh. can't would want me to answer this question. Well, I was just curious what you thought. Because like I'd percentage, of course, you would say 50-50. That's the but I said 51. Oh, 51-49. My apologies. But I didn't know because I remember um Ben spilled the beans about a conversation you had at dinner, or maybe just between the two of you, where you were placing bets on how long we'd stay together. And that conversation like was brought up and you were super mad that Ben told me that you guys were placing bets on that. And he's like, no, 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 We're not talking about that. Ben, that was supposed to be you and I. And it was like, I don't remember what you said. I think Ben was like, I don't know, maybe by junior year, if you're still together, then you won't break up or something. But I, I was just wanting to hear from you directly. Yeah. If you I thought- yeah. Here's the deal. I don't want to play a, a deciding role in this either way. <laughs> so I will just go on the record as a dad. It's my job to not like the, I was going to say boys that you bring around, but it's really boy you bring around. There's right. only been one, well, um, yes. but I really like Patrick. So here's the deal. It's, he's a good kid. So I, I don't know. You guys are like babies. So I, I just wouldn't, I'm just not even worried about it. I'm like, hmm. And you're 19, so you got still another 11 years before you get married because we did discuss that you should wait till you're 30. Right. And right. I'm pretty sure you signed off on that at some point in time. Probably when I was four. like 12. Yeah, or something like that. And you I made me started. scared of boys, so I was like, I'm never going to talk to boys. Yes, yes, I did. That should have been a segment we did about how you <laughs> scarred me for life about boys. <laughs> That'd be great. There's yes. so much yeah. oh, I could go we into could, there. We could have a whole segment about public displays of affection ah. and how I am so opposed to it. The problem was, that was my thing. It wasn't supposed to be a learned behavior on your part, yet you are so opposed to public displays of uh-huh. affection. It makes me um, so uncomfortable. Yes. And it just, oh, it makes me so, I just feel awkward. And your mom hates it because she's like the most affectionate person in the world. Yeah. And I don't even want to hold her hand in public. I'm just like, oh, see, that rubbed off on me. I don't like people holding hands either. Yeah. Weirdos. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, so I guess that is the end of this show. This was fun, Em. I had a great time. I'm glad we got to do this. And as always, you can listen to this podcast on Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, and many of the other uh, podcast networks. Just not Apple, because, you know, you just got to keep trying. Great job. I love you, M. And uh, thanks so much for watching the show, and we'll see you. Thanks. Love you, Dad. Bye.